payroll tax cut issue uh, is brought up by Obama. He says we've got to extend it for one more year. Uh, he presses the Republicans on it. Republicans say, oh, hell no, I'm not going to pay with a, for, with a millionaire surtax. We're going to protect our millionaire buddies. Oh, we used to be in favor of tax cuts, but now this goes to the middle class, so we hate it because we don't really give a damn about the middle class. They fight back and forth, and it looks like they finally get a deal in the Senate, 89 to 10, bipartisan. They're going to pass it. They're going to put a bunch of uh, provisions in there that Obama doesn't like, but, you know, it's a typical... And you know what? It's not just a typical compromise in terms of it being negative, right? You know, oftentimes Obama and the Democrats buckle. But this was a compromise, and from time to time you do have to compromise with the Republicans. They control the House. We get that, right? And this wasn't one of the worst compromises, right? Even though there were parts that really bothered me, there's been much worse, right? So it goes over to the House Republicans and they say no. And then McConnell goes, what, what, what do you mean no? What, we had a deal. What, why, why no? Uh, and Boehner's like, I don't know, I couldn't control my guys. Uh, in fact, uh, there are reports, Dana Melbank did a good report on this in the Washington Post, that the goofy House Republicans got together and pumped themselves up by quoting different parts of the movie Braveheart. Hey, back up there, man. That's what we do here, okay? You can't go around quoting Braveheart. So these guys come in and they're like, oh, hold the line, hold, hold, hold for the rich. So uh, they scuttled the deal, and then today... Uh, there's been a world of pressure on the Republicans uh, to go in the other direction. But Boehner says no. He c comes on there's another press conference and says, no, we're definitely not backing him down from this. Minutes after the press conference, McConnell comes out and says, and that's, of course, the Republican leader on the Senate side, says, what the hell are you doing? Go and agree to what we have already compromised on and what we already have reached agreement on. We need you to fold. How often does that happen? So that leads to the interesting question of, why are they doing this? Why are all the Republicans throwing the House Republicans under the bus? Let me show you examples. Here is a veteran Senate Republican strategist. He says Senate Republicans are tired of paying the price for the lack of legislative thoughtfulness in the House. That's a harsh quote. It gets harsher. Here's a former House Republican leadership staffer. He says these House Republicans are like a bunch of drunk kids who want to take dad's jag out for a joyride. There's no guarantee they'll get home safe, and there's a damn good chance they'll wreck it, and it's going to be expensive to fix. Harsh words. You think those are harsh? Let's go to Carl Rove, clip eight. Well, the question now is how do the Republicans get out of it? And there's only one way to get out of it, and that is stay in Washington, wait until President Obama gets on an airplane and heads to Hawaii, and then hold a session of the House, vote the two-month extension, and use as an opportunity to beat up on the now long-absent Democrats and Harry Reid and the absent president and say, look, this is going to cause, this is going to cause, uh, this is going to not be good for the companies that have to write the paychecks, because we've already heard from the people who process payroll, payroll checks that this is going to be a problem. It's not good for the American people, because we're only giving them a two months, not a year's worth of confidence. Use it for political theater, and then vote the two-month extension and get out of town. They've lost the optics on it, and the only way to win it is to just stick there and ruin their own Christmases and wait until the president heads off to Hawaii for his and then, and then lambast the Democrats for having abdicated their responsibilities to pass a year-long tax cut. Well, that, that was actually refreshingly honest in a couple of different ways. One, he says, we lost. We lost the optics. Uh, we just got to give uh, the president what he wants on this, the compromise that the Senate agreed to. Ra pack up your bags, we're done, we lost, okay? Which you never see Karl Rove saying, right? And then second of all, he says, okay, don't get me wrong, and he says it on national TV, we should blame the president anyway. Uh, wait till he goes on his vacation, right? And then go, ha ha, oh, I can't believe you're not in town. Oh my God, what a terrible guy you are. All right, fine, we'll agree to what you wanted before. Oh, it's all your fault, boo. He's saying the, Repu the trick that he's gonna do and that they should do to blame him President Obama, when he's clearly not at fault, when Karl Rove himself admits it's the House Republicans that are at fault. They're shameless, right? So the real question is, why are all of these Republicans, the Senate guys, the former House guy, Karl Rove, yesterday, Wall Street Journal with a scathing editorial saying, you guys blew it, hurry up and just concede on this. Why are they all saying at the same time, hey, back away, fold your hand on this? Well, look, there's a couple of theories on it. One is that uh, they think, you know what? These Tea Party guys are going to drive us off of a cliff. One, they're going to drive us off of a cliff, cliff politically because Congress is at an 11% approval rating, breaking all records. You know, 
we actually have to get people's votes to get back into power. Like, they've gotten drunk on the power of money because money wins the elections so overwhelmingly so often. But they're like, oh, right, but at the end, some people actually vote. And God, the country despises us. So the one possible theory is that they recognize that and they're like, oh, my God, the game is up. This is so obvious. It, it, we made it uh, so clear that we don't give a damn about tax cuts if it goes to the middle class. It, we made it so obvious that we only care about the rich. Oh, backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. That's very likely. The second part of it is, look, these guys have been running this game for the last 30 years where the Republicans play hardball and the Democrats go, oh, no, please, uncle, you win. And then they get these compromises that are massively pro-Republican, massively in favor of business interests and the rich. But now the Tea Party is ruining it by coming in there, throwing a monkey wrench and wanting to go further right wing. And basically what Roe, Fox News, Wall Street Journal are all telling them, hey, you knuckleheads, we got a good racket going here. Believe me, we're getting as much as we possibly can from the middle class and rooking them to death. Now you come in here and you ask for more and you look ridiculous. No, shut up and let us play, a, let us play the same old game we always play to suck all the money out of the middle class. What the hell's the matter with you? And this is the, you know, the 18th time that the Tea ha uh, Party has done this, where the, they want, the Republicans wanted to do the grand bargain with Obama. Both sides had ag basically agreed. The establishment had agreed. Let's take the money out of Social Security, out of Medicare. Let's cut spending for the middle class, and let's give it in tax breaks to the rich. That was the grand bargain. I hated the grand bargain. The Tea Party wanted more for the rich, and they screwed it up. It's part of the greed of the Koch brothers and it's part of the right wing run amok. So this is on a relatively unimportant issue a year before the election. Also, those guys in the establishment on the Republican side telling the House Republicans and the Tea Party, hey, get back in line, man. You're screwing up our game here. You're asking for something so far right, so outrageous, that you're gonna ruin it for us. Let us just keep bleeding them to death, basically, with the normal programs that we've got going on. So that's the internal battle that's going on here, and that's why everybody's leaning on the House Republicans.